official community plans. And those are long struggles, and we've heard that, and Debbie went over it, and so on, about how it is that the community gets together and establishes what should or shouldn't happen in that process. The regional board went out of its way to provide that other nine holes. There was no recognition for that. Peggy Connor, in particular, was one who actually acquired most of that land. When they had their big opening for that other nine holes, the chair of the board was not even invited. It's sad, you know, because so much effort went in to help provide those other nine holes. I guess the other thing that is important too is about that motion and about the timing of that motion as well. We heard Ed say that, you know, the golf course would not engage in this million dollar adventure if they didn't have this expectation. But let's be clear, by January 94, most of that golf course was already created. And even at that time, the 15 meter buffer zone was gone. I chaired that meeting that Jim Gurney made that motion. And as part of the unrelenting confrontation with the board members and the planning department, that we look yet again at more trees coming out of Cliff Kilker. Now the motion's been read and reread a number of times. But I'll tell you one of the things that the motion does not say. It does not say that the board will cut and allow cutting. It says flag them to cut. There's a very clear intention. We didn't know as a board what that impact would be. We knew that the 15 meter zone was already gone, but we did not know what that impact would be. So we said hire your arborist, flag the trees, and we will see. They didn't do that. And as Jim Gurney's statement said, and, and I'll tell you, we thought the issue was over. But clearly it isn't over. At that time we were talking an extra 15 meters, by the way. Now it's up to 75 and 100 meters here. I guess my advice is uh, to the board members, is even though that uh, motion was made back in 94, it's time to rescind it. Thank you. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, can I respond to that? Let's clarify the record. Peggy Connor was invited to our grand opening on July 20th, 1996, and she attended. Good. Second thing is, he was saying that 90, Jan January 94 and all this information, we didn't start construction until the spring of 95. So I don't know where his facts are coming from. Thank you. Hello, my name is Marriott Bernstein, and um, I'm a resident of Roberts Creek, and um, I want to say that when the golf course went and wanted to uh, expand the golf course and take a bit of uh, Cliff Gilker and put the buffer on, I was one of the residents of Roberts Creek who thought it was a good idea to share a little more of the land. And um, I was in favor of that, and I thought that Cliff Gilker uh, was a place for recreation and we've had uh, our baseball field up there, and we have a wonderful park. And um, I was comfortable with that. But tonight I want all the regional people to know that I'm not in favor of any more trees and no more cutting. I walked that park not too long ago, and it's not that big anymore. And I really feel that we need to keep our parks as green as we can. And I don't, didn't have a problem being a resident of Roberts Creek and allowing that, to ha that um, 
uh, amount of land to go towards the golf club. And my understanding was the buffer. And to find out that that didn't happen is very disappointing. I'm also willing as a, to let that go. But I really want the regional board to hear that I'm one of those voters who would have voted yes. And I'm still supported what they did to take some more land for the golf course. But no more, not one more tree, nothing. If you can't make the greens green, then give it up or try something else. Thanks. Hi, I'm Russell Kachuk. I live in Roberts Creek. As far as I can see, a golf course wants to cut trees in a park. From the very definition of what a park is, I don't think I want anyone to cut trees or any vegetation in a park. Thank you. Good evening. My name is David Young. I'm a resident of Roberts Creek for almost 20 years. I'm sorry to see you gentlemen being beat up so badly here tonight. Um, your golf course is nice. But I think you're here more looking for an answer than this confrontation which you are receiving. I think if a vote was taken within five minutes, we would have known and the meeting could have been over with. Everyone here is against the cutting. There is another answer. We have laws here and people are trying to force more to stop this grass from growing with natural sunlight. There is federal laws that also stop grass from growing under natural sunlight. And answers have been found. It is called full spectrum lighting. I think if you spoke to the Olson brothers who are probably here tonight, <laughs> they would give you an answer to this. Uh, tall poles, wooden ones, facing away from the park onto your greens. And I'm not really being facetious, this is honest. You could grow your greens without cutting any more trees. Look at that answer, thank you. Hello, my name is Gail Newman. I also live in Roberts Creek. I am the Lorax. I speak for the trees. I also, as a parent, speak for my children because I want my children to be able to go into the park and see those trees. And I want their children to see those trees. I'm not against golfing. I'm against tree cutting in the park. Thank you. My name is Donna White, and I live in Roberts Creek. I came to the meeting tonight at the request of a friend I had sworn to stay out of this fight. <laughs> I've been a little tired lately, and I don't like fighting. I could argue and pick points, and, but I'm really not in the mood for that. So I thought I'd share just a little bit about myself. I've lived in different parts of the world and traveled when I was younger all around the world and saw an awful lot of beautiful places. I finally moved to Vancouver and lived there for several years and I am now a refugee <laughs> on the Sunshine Coast. Every day I get up and I look around me and I think that I live in one of the most beautiful places in the world. It has a raw, natural beauty. And it's just marvelous. It refreshes me. It, it keeps me alive. And I really appreciate this place. And Cliff Gilker is just a tiny little piece of it. So I ask myself, why should I care? <laughs> because once it's gone, it's gone. And each little bit that you nibble away is a procedure, is a start to that, to the end. And it's, it's melting in front of me. I think we can all agree that golfers and people that don't love trees and people that love trees, that it's, it's a marvelous place. 
And I'd just like it if we could all just take a minute and think about that. You can always make other golf courses. You can take land that's already been cleared, or but you can't make another Cliff Gilker, and you can't get another tree like that. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, um, do I have to follow that? Um, my name is Art Manning. I'm from Hopkins Landing. I'm, I tried to get a place in Roberts Creek, but I, I couldn't afford it. And, uh, but that's because of the golf club. <laughs> well, I, one of the reasons I, I wanted to say something, I wanted to correct an uh, erroneous impression that's, that's come about here tonight, and that is that all members of the Sunshine Gulf Coast, Coast Golf Club are not millionaires from Mars. They're local people, they're your neighbors. I'm, I'm on a minimal pension, and the golf course is my main means of recreation. It's my only means of recreation. Uh, I know a lot of people think, oh, you belong to the golf course, automatically you're, you know, you've got to be rich or something, but that's not the case. And another point, the aesthetic value of the golf course. Listen, I go into Cliff Gilker Park too, but I get the same feeling when I look down the golf course. I see the green grass, I see the trees that are there. It's a wonderful feeling. And I think you'll find that most golfers feel the same way. We're not out there pound, just pounding the ball. It's a total experience. And, and included in that total experience, there's, you know, believe it or not, there's what, Ed, you can correct me, about 8,500 rounds of golf played by our neighbors who are not members of the golf course, but they get their recreation there and they enjoy it. And I know the, the emotional value of, of what's been said here tonight is pretty tough to beat, but there is, uh, have a little bit of compassion for some of us who have a total, a different, little bit different look, but we're all after the same thing, basically. Thank you very much. Good evening, my name is Donna Sugar and I've lived in Roberts Creek for about 20 years. I have so many things going around in my head, I, I'm not sure I'm gonna make much sense, but I'll give it a try. I think we need to take a lesson from what's happening in East Vancouver around the Hastings Park area, which is home to the P&E and uh, race uh, tracks and so on. That piece of land was dedicated as a park to be used, in the, used in the same way that Stanley Park exists in Vancouver at the turn of the century. And little by little, piece by piece, bits in, of Hastings Park were taken over for other uses, and it's now completely paved over and will cost the city of Vancouver, the province of British Columbia, a great deal of money to restore back to the condition that it was in when it was dedicated as a park. And um, that is a process that is underway, and I don't want to see that happen here. I think it's a real tragedy that the previous board of the regional district was unable to take a firm enough stand on this issue when it came up those years ago. That unfortunate wording of that unfortunate motion in 1994 created perhaps a lot of confusion that they didn't intend. They wanted to be nice. They wanted to feel like they were keeping things open for discussion. Unfortunately, our current board is doing the same thing. Somebody has to stick their neck out. It's time. And I certainly hope, unfortunately, you're hiding in the audience. You're not sitting up there at that table. You are hiding behind your staff people. You are not willing to sit here and talk to us directly. But I hope you're listening, because I don't want to have to stand here and tell you again. I've been here so many times. Please, take a stand, listen to us, stick your necks out, and say no for the last time. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Heather Powell, and uh, 
I also am a resident of Roberts Creek and